So let's take a look at an online graphing calculator tool called Desmos. It's free. Um, it, a lot of calculus courses are using it because it's so powerful and it's just out there and you can use it on any device. Um, and it can actually do the work that we just did um, in a little bit different way. So what I'll do with it is first of all just launch a web browser and go to desmos.com. That's D-E-S-M-O-S. I'm just going to click start graphing. Um, if you want to actually save your graphs and everything that you do, you just have to create a free account. Um, it's, it's not a big deal. Um, and in Desmos, what I'll do to get this process started is just to, in the plus column over here, notice you can sort of type formulas and calculations and stuff over here, and then the graph part will just show up right here on the graph paper. Um, for our data, we'll need to insert a table, and then just we'll need to type in our data points by hand. There is a way to just import them from a spreadsheet, but just it's a pretty small data set, so let's just type them in. Once I've typed in all of my data points, you'll notice, at least here in this example, nothing has happened yet. Um, and that's because my grid, my graph paper, only goes from negative 10 to 10 by default. So I'm going to want to fix that. Um, I wanted to tell my x-axis to go from whatever limits I want it to. And based on our last graph, we saw 0 to 1,300 is probably about right. Um, same thing with the y-axis. Let's go maybe 0 to 600. And once we've done that, now here are our data points. Right? Um, and if we want to check... Nice thing about the Desmos graphs is they're interactive. You can just click on them and they'll sort of tell you what they're doing. So that data point is 636.19 comma 347. Um, if you're going to use these graphs as part of your presentation, you might also want to add labels for your x and y axes. So this is Q, my national market quantity in thousands. And the y axis is P, my unit price, dollars per unit. And that kind of helps to keep us grounded when we use this graph to interpret. But of course, what we wanted to do is we wanted to find a, an equation. We wanted to come up with a quadratic, a degree two uh, equation that fits this data. So how you do that in Desmos is you first type in, um, the way I like to do it anyway, is you type in the type of equation that you want it to fit. So let's suppose that I want to just fit a linear equation for a second. Then let me ask you this. What does the form of any linear equation tend to look like? Y equals mx plus b, the template. That's the thing that we drill into your heads in every algebra class ever. So I can just start by typing that in, y equals mx plus b. But we want Desmos to fit this equation to that data. So there's two things we need to do. First, we'll change the x and the y in my equation into x1 and y1 instead, so that it points to this data. So I'll change this x into x1 and it's y into y1. Desmos is super smart if you, you don't even need to use the subscript key. Um, but actually, if I do that, it actually wipes out my data. So I want to make that my second step. My first step is I'm going to change the equal sign into a twiddle. Uh, the twiddle is the little symbol that tells Desmos that you want it to do a regression, an approximate match uh, for this function to this data. So put the twiddle in first, and then do x1 and y1. And then, hey presto, uh, it pops right up with a linear regression fit. Uh, and it tells you right here what are the regression parameters. The slope, m, negative 0.47. The intercept for our linear model, 654.852. And so therefore, if you put those into this equation, you get the full equation uh, for this regression model. It also shows us the goodness of fit parameters, the correlation coefficient. The closer that this r squared is to 1, the stronger of a model. The more that this linear model has <laughs> captured the variance between x and y. Um, so that's how I would get it to do a linear model. So what would I want to do if I wanted to get a quadratic model instead? What do quadratic functions look like if not y equals mx plus b? Maybe we can put both of these models on the same axis. What do quadratic functions, what's the form that they take? Polynomials of degree 2. y equals... <coughs> if I have a polynomial of degree 2, I know I want an x squared in there somewhere. But I might also have x terms. I might also have constant terms. So our general form for a quadratic equation, quadratic model, was y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So it includes a second order term, a first order term, and also a constant term. So if I want Desmos to fit that model, replace the equals with a twiddle, and change the, x1s, change the x's to x1's, and the y to a y1. Hmm. That's 
That's weird. So then again, Desmos gives you the, the full uh, e equation, the parameters uh, that make it fit uh, the data that we have here in the table. And again, the nice thing about Desmos is that it's a lot easier to play around with the graph, uh, to zoom it out, to move the axes around, um, and to change the colors. I just think it, it just generates a lot nicer looking graphs generally um, than Excel does. So you're free, as far as the project goes, to use either of these tools that you want to. Um, when we get a little bit later on, we start to do some of the more deeper, further analysis uh, in the project. Um, there are some nice things that Desmos can also do to annotate graphs and shade areas and do that kind of stuff that Excel is, is atrocious with doing. Um, so I think my own preference tends to shift more towards using this tool for the visuals um, later on in the process. Um, but probably for the regression part, the one that we're starting with right now, um, Excel is probably a better choice just to do the actual the computation and the analysis. So it turns out that the reason that the quadratic that we were getting out of Desmos wasn't lining up is that I had a typo in the data that I put in. Putting in the right data point here at 598 actually gives me the, the same regression model that Excel did. So we don't have to worry about uh, Desmos's calculation capability. Um, the other nice thing that Desmos actually can do for us is if we just click on those intercepts, um, if we click on the intercepts on the x and y axes in Desmos, it actually gives us approximate values uh, for them. So it can short circuit some of that algebra, um, but of course, for your own sake and for your own practice, I'm going to want you to actually use algebra to find those x and y intercepts at the end of the day.